Welcome to a summer night of reading adventure with our intrepid team from the Central Branch. I am Rohini Gupta, Adult Learning and Innovation Specialist, and with me is Angie Engels. With the, H, with the Howard County Library System Land Acknowledgement, we want to respectfully honor the Susquehanna Confederation who governed, lived, farmed, and hunted on the land now called Howard County. Their nations conceded into land treaties in 1652 and 1661 after English colonizers ended their generational governance and stewardship of the Howard County, of the land Howard County is built upon. This practice of land acknowledgement is to honor and respect the indigenous inhabitants, both from the past and the present. Thank you, Angie. This year, we have a new and engaging format for our summer reading for adults, similar to a Goodreads in your pocket. So head over to our library branch to pick up a reading journal and complete any three challenges or read any three books. Drop by any branch between August 1st and 31st to complete a finisher's card and be automatically entered into prize drawings. All finishers also receive a limited edition prize while supplies last. Before we start, mark your calendar for these three upcoming author events. Voices of Freedom, Contemporary Writing from Ukraine on Thursday, June 8th, 7 to 8 p.m., both in person at the Miller Branch and online. Join Irene Chalupa, journalist and translator, for an in-depth conversation about the distinctive and rich Ukrainian writing tradition, and the people behind the news living and working on the edge amid the country's fight for freedom. On June 14, 7 p.m. online, we have Wendy Echo, Mystery at Windswept Farm. In this much anticipated third book in the Rosalie Hart mystery series, Rosalie's hard-earned organic farm certification is threatened by a toxic neighbor who is about to crop dust his winter wheat. Someone is murdered. Mystery at Windswept Farm delights with suspense, humor, and mouth-watering menus. Fun fact, Wendy lives on Maryland's enchanting eastern shore. And lastly, on June 24th, Saturday at 2 p.m. at Miller, Come over for a few good laughs. Alexandra Petri, US history, important American documents I made up. Washington Post humor col columnist, Alexandra P. Try, I believe that's the correct pronunciation, is perhaps America's most beloved political satirist. Her new side-splitting work of historical humor uses imagined documents to create a laugh out loud, irreverent takedown on our nation's complicated past. Petri has a bachelor's in English and classics from Harvard College, and I always start my morning with her column in the Washington Post. And now over to the remarkable Beth Haynes. Oh, Rohini, you are the best. Thank you so much. Welcome, fellow readers. Yes, my name is Beth Haynes, she, her, and I'm the assistant branch manager here at the Central Branch in Vibrant, happening downtown Columbia. Now, most of the titles we'll be promoting tonight are from our Adult Summer Reading 2023 list, which we'll send to you in a follow-up email. Also, printed copies are available at all HCLS branches, and it's available electronically on the Summer Reading page of the HCLS website. Now, to be eligible for inclusion on our list, the titles had to have been acquired by HCLS within the last year, and we have to own at least six copies of each, but go ahead and get on those hold lists. And just about all of the listed titles are owned by every public service branch. So let me go over our format. We'll have rounds where each one of us will give a promotion and we'll state the title, the author, and whether it's fiction or nonfiction. And don't worry, at the end of each little promo, we'll repeat that title, author, and whether it's fiction or nonfiction. So are we ready for round one? Let's begin the adventure. 
My first title is Anywhere You Run by Wanda M. Morris, fiction. Violet and Marigold are the surviving blooms in their mother's bouquet of daughters. They are smart, loving, and full of promise. They are also Black in Mississippi in 1964. Jim Crow laws and attitudes not only threaten their freedom, they threaten their very lives. The sisters both end up on the run, separately. One due to physical torment and a choice she made in response. One due to emotional torment and a choice she made in response. Set against the background, background, backdrop of the Mississippi burning summer, Mars's story is suspenseful, moving, and enlightening. You will root for Violet and Marigold and for Morris's next novel, Anywhere You Run by Wanda M. Morris. Hi everyone, my name is Mickey Baxter and I'm an instructor and research specialist here at the Central Branch. My pronouns are she, hers. And before I start up talking about my first book, I would like to share with you some of our resources for learning a new language. Learning a new language can be a challenging yet ultimately rewarding experience. Fortunately, the Howard County Library System offers a wealth of online platforms that you can access anytime and anywhere with your library card. Through databases like BrainFuse, Gale Courses, LinkedIn Learning, Mango, Rosetta Stone, and many more, you can access a wide range of classes and resources to aid you in your language learning journey. These databases provide interactive and immersive ways to learn a new language, including opportunities to receive assistance from live tutors, take online classes led by college level instructors, learn a new language in your home language, and even watch movies in a target language that you're hoping to learn. M many more things can um, be accomplished with any of these databases. And no matter what language you're interested in learning, you're sure to find the resources that you need with HCLS. If you have any questions about using these databases, don't hesitate to email us at askhcls at hclibrary.org. We're always happy to help you get started on your language learning journey. And for my first pick, I'm going to talk about the mostly true story of Tanner and Louise by Colleen Oakley, fiction. After dropping out of college, 21-year-old Tanner Quimby takes a job as a live-in caregiver for an elderly woman named Louise Wilt, despite Louise's reluctance to have someone caring for her. As Tanner begins to notice odd behavior from Louise, such as keeping her garden shed locked all the time and sudden mid sudden midnight escapes, they embark on a wild adventure together. The unlikely pair must outrun their past mistakes while discovering the true meaning of friendship and the importance of taking risks. The Mostly True Story of Tanner and Louise by Colleen Oakley. Hi, my name is Angela Best and I'm an instructor here at Central Branch. My pronouns are she, her. For my first book, The Housekeeper by Joy Fielding, fiction. Reading the inner flap of this book reveals the sum of what this novel is about. An older family member is ill. They hire a housekeeper who lives in. She's really good at what she does and is a godsend to the multi-generational family. She's very nice even occasionally volunteers to help with the grandchildren. She steals, sorry, borrows things, and she cooks and bakes. Then 
there's a body. What? Who? Why? That's the beauty of this book. Lots of things you can anticipate and lots of plot twists throughout, all the way to the last page. The Housekeeper by Joy Fielding. Hello, everyone. My name is Wendy Kamasar, she, her, Instructor and Research Specialist at the Central Branch. My first title is Dele Wed's Destiny by Tomi Obaro, Fiction. I think we can all agree that few things stir up emotions and feelings like a wedding. Three women reunite after 30 years of separation to attend the wedding of one of their daughters in Lagos, Nigeria. Curl up in your favorite chair, poolside, beachfront, or living room, and get ready to fall in love with this cast of characters as they navigate through the echo of their past while confronting their turbulent present. This debut is about mothers and daughters, culture, class, love, and the resilience of female friendship. Dele Wed's Destiny by Tomi Obaro. All right, hello everyone. Before I get into my first pick, I'm going to talk a little bit about journaling. So if you decide to partake in our adult reading challenge, where you get a cool little reading journal, if you find yourself enjoying that, you may want to pursue creating your own reading journal. Um, it can be a great way to keep track of and reflect on what you read. You can look ahead to upcoming releases that you're interested in or that you might want to put on hold at the library. You can follow your progress reading a book series or books by a certain author, and you can reflect on what you like and what you don't like so that you kind of can kind of cultivate your reading taste and um, you know, if you don't want to create a reading journal, journals can be pretty much customized to whatever your needs are. And it's a fun way to de-stress and be creative. All right. And for my first pick, I have chosen The Villa by Rachel Hawkins, fiction. 1974, Orvieto, Italy, a group of young musicians and writers plan to spend their summer in a picturesque Italian villa. But their stay ends abruptly when one of the five is brutally murdered. Present day, two estranged friends plan to spend their summer reconnecting in that very same villa. Chess is a wildly popular self-help guru, while Emily is a down-on-her-luck cozy mystery author. She's in the middle of a messy divorce and desperate for inspiration and an escape. Emily discovers a diary hidden in the villa, dated summer of 1974 and soon realizes there might be a more sinister truth behind the infamous murder that took place nearly 50 years ago. The villa's horrific past provides Emily with plenty of inspiration, but complications arise as secrets and betrayals are revealed. Will the villa claim another victim before summer's end? The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. Hi, I'm Angie, she, her. The Lunar Housewife by Carolyn Woods. Imagine the scene from Breakfast and Tiffany's, the party scene, and you will get a little bit of the idea of the opening to The Lunar Housewife, complete with Crying Woman. So it's 1953, and Louise, we have several Louises in our books tonight, or not several, but some. Louise is trying to write a novel, a fantasy novel, called The Lunar Housewife. That's the title of the book. So in 1953, she wants to be taken seriously. She's writing for a newly um, run, newly out magazine called Downtown that her boyfriend and his friend Harry started. But as you might be not surprised to hear in 1953, it's not very welcoming to women writing for serious magazines. So um, Louise uses a male name for her writing. She is about to get an interview with Ernest Hemingway, who by the way, is absolutely delightful in this book. And I'm not a big fan of of how, you know, because people in historical fiction don't always get real life characters, right? But he's Papa. And it's delightful to, to you just feel like Ernest Hemingway's come back um, and is in this book. So I digress, but it's set against the backdrop of the House on American Activities Committee hearings. And the Korean War is about to come to a close and the Cold War is escalating with the Russians who not surprisingly are painted as the obvious antagonists. 
The thing is that what suggests the truth is far more intricate and that the U.S. itself is not innocent because they are trying to blacklist artists who and also manipulate and suppress any cultural expression that fails to exalt American capitalism. The sinister message resonates, resonates on a disturbingly plausible scenario that we can still hear today. The Lunar Housewife by Carolyn Woods. Good evening, everybody. I'm closing out our first round with my first pick. My name is Ash. My pronouns are they, them. And I am also an instructor and research specialist here at Central Branch. I have another historical title for you with Lavender House by Lev A.C. Rosen, fiction. Setting San Francisco, 1952. Former police detective Andy Mills has lost everything after being outed as gay fired, blacklisted, kicked out of his apartment, and socially shunned, he quite literally doesn't know how to go on with his life. Then he is approached by a woman who asks him to investigate the murder of her wife, Irene Lamontagne, who was the head of a soap empire. The scene of the crime? The secluded Lavender House estate, which turns out to be home to a number of gay people living their lives openly within the privacy of the estate. Equally appealing to readers of both murder mysteries and queer history, This Who Done It is a perfect read for Pride Month this June, or for any time this summer. Lavender House by Lev A.C. Rhodes. Let's jump into round two with Fly Girl by Anne Hood, nonfiction. Perhaps you're familiar with Anne Hood's novels. The Red Thread, The Book That Matters Most, or my personal favorite, The Obituary Writer. And maybe you know that Hood had decided on the career of author when she was just a child. Perhaps what you don't know is that to prepare herself for her dream job, Hood decided that she needed worldly experiences. She needed adventure. So in high school, she decided that she would become a flight attendant. And after graduating from college, she did become one. Hood was a white flight attendant when airlines still served complete meals, when rampant sexism had not yet gone covert, and when the airline industry had just been deregulated, making air travel much more accessible. This is a coming of age story with a bit of history, and plenty of adventure. Fly Girl by Anne Hood. My next pick is All This Could Be Different by Sarah Thinkum Matthews, fiction. This book tells the story of Sneha, an Indian immigrant navigating her entry-level job in Milwaukee during the American recession. As she struggles to make ends meet and build meaningful relationships, she finds herself drawn to Marina, a captivating dancer. But as secrets unravel and problems arise, her friendships and romance are put to the test. With beautiful prose and a tender portrayal of young people navigating love and community, All This Could Be Different by Sarah Thinkum Matthews is a captivating novel about finding one's place in the world. All This Could Be Different by Sarah Thinkum Matthews. Before my next pick, I just have a few tips. Did you know that passport services are offered at two of our six branches, specifically the East Columbia and Glenwood branch? Walk-in services are offered on a first-come, first-served basis. Both branches operate their passport services daily, except on Fridays and Sundays. All information about hours, which forms are accepted, and fees to be paid can be found on the 8CLS website. And we have a class coming up called Preparing for International Travel, and that will be held at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, the 21st of June at the Glenwood branch. In addition to discussing the passport application process, it will also highlight areas to be considered while planning a trip, included changes in international travel since COVID. 
Now, my second book recommendation, Just Like Mother by Anne Heltzel, fiction. Do you remember The Handmaiden's Tale? This is definitely not that. It is, however, one of those, oh my goodness, what on earth is going on here type of books. It is set in normal New York City with traffic, small apartments, and bars. It is also set in upstate New York in a large, rambling, gothic-looking house that Freemasons had used. Mauve grew up in a cult. Lucky enough for her, she was young enough to be adopted. She tries, she really tries to have as normal a life as possible. Her cousin, who she has reunited with, wants children. Mauve does not. I love murder mysteries, but I don't like dark books. At one book, sorry, at one point, I thought this is too much and I nearly put the book down. But I really wanted to know what happened next. So I skimmed a few pages and pushed through, and I'm glad I did. Just Like Mother by Anne Heltzel. Okay, up next, The Lifestyle by Taylor Hahn, fiction. A hilarious, heartwarming debut about the complexities of the heart, marriage, and swinging. Georgina Wagman is hashtag living her best life until she catches her husband cheating. In an attempt to save her marriage and recapture the spark, she dives headfirst into the Manhattan swinging scene, dragging her friends and their partners with her. All is going according to plan until she runs into her college ex. And suddenly, things start to feel a bit more complicated. A playful homage to Jane Austen's Emma and perfect for fans of Sex and the City. The Lifestyle by Taylor Hahn. All right, so before I get into my second pick, I realized I forgot to introduce myself before my tip and my first pick. So my name is Emily Bell, like everyone else here, mostly. I'm an instructor and research specialist at the Central Branch, and my pronouns are she, her. All right, so my second pick is Unmask Alice, LSD, Satanic Panic, and the Imposter Behind the World's Most Notorious Diaries by Rick Emerson, nonfiction. Do you remember the infamous diary, Go Ask Alice? It was published back in 1971, and it was promoted as a real diary written by a troubled teen whose life spiraled out of control after she accidentally tried LSD. The diary was an instant sensation, and the cautionary tale instilled fear in parents and teens alike, and it helped add fuel to the fire in the ongoing war on drugs. But as it turns out, this diary was a piece of fiction, not even a piece of fiction written by a teenage girl, but rather by a middle-aged con woman named Beatrice Sparks. And Go Ask Alice was just the beginning because Beatrice Sparks would go on to supposedly find and publish more of these diaries written by troubled teens. Unmask Alice is the scandalous true story of the woman behind these fake diaries and the harmful impact left in her wake. This book is an absolutely wild ride, I don't think you'll be able to put it down once you pick it up. And if you're anything like me, you won't be able to stop talking about it once you finish the book because it's so, so bonkers. Unmask Alice by Rick Emerson. I am so sorry. Um, I wanted to say about our travel collection and how nice it is to, to have conversations with people because where we are at Central, the travel section is not very far away from the steps. So when people come up and ask for the travel section and you can show them where they are because there's like Frommers, Fodor's, Rough Guide and Lonely Planet. But it's also fun to discuss where people are going or what books are looking for for travel. So come into the second floor of Central and check out our fabulous travel collection. There's something for wherever you want to go in this really interesting world of ours.
My next book is Atomic Anna by Rachel Berenbaum. So I, Emily mentioned the word bonkers when she was closing out about her book. And I have to say, my book is bonkers too. Rumor has it that Back to the Future, the sequel, turned a lot of people off because of the intricate timelines. Well, I'm here to tell you that Rachel Berenbaum has got time travel right. And when she was writing this, she must have had a whiteboard to plot everything out because it just really works. Anna Ber Berkova, a brilliant Soviet scientist is involved in the Chernobyl disaster. And she's trying to create a time machine with the intention of not only altering the catastrophic accident, but also her own destiny. So despite her efforts, the reactor still melts down and she's sent back to April 26, 1986. She, she puts her life in jeopardy until she unexpectedly jumps through the time. I'm sorry, on April 26, 1986, she goes through time and ends up in 1992 where she meets her daughter, believe it or not. And that's where things really get intricate and the time travel kicks in. And I want to say, even if you aren't a time travel or science fiction person, speculative fiction, the, the personal relationships, the generational relationships between mother and daughter and then granddaughter as they all are interwoven through time, that will pull you in. So I cannot recommend Atomic Anna Enough by Rachel Berenbaum. My next pick is Walking with Gorillas, The Journey of an African Wildlife Vet by Gladys Kalema Zukusoka. Wildlife conservation and human public health are two topics that might not immediately seem connected to the average person. However, this biography is not of an average woman. Dr. Gladys, as she's lovingly referred to by many of her colleagues and peers, she blazed her own trail as Uganda's first wildlife veterinarian, advocating for such a position to be created within the Ugandan National Park system when she was still a student. The director listened and she had a job waiting for her right after graduation, and her impact has only increased from there. As she spent more time treating wild animals, she realized that the diseases in the local human communities were affecting wildlife and vice versa. If you listen to any of the snippets of her online, it's really emphasizing that we cannot treat or take care of wildlife with also treating the humans that we're all sharing the same habitat with. And through her dedication to supporting the health of humans and wildlife alike, she has revolutionized the world of conservation. For a powerful story of a woman affecting change and making her dreams a reality, check out Walking with Gorillas by Gladys Kalema Zukusoka. Well, round three, but let me tell you, I, I sure want, I want to meet Dr. Gladys. How cool is she? Wow. So my next pick is The Family Remains by Lisa Jewell, fiction. On the banks of the Thames, mudlarkers, yep, a real thing. A mudlarker is a person who scavenges along riverbanks. Well, these mudlarkers make a shocking discovery, and Detective Chief Inspector Owusu is called in. Rachel learns that her husband has been found murdered in his home in France. Lucy, who had sought refuge from an horrific event decades ago, discovers that her brother has gone in search of a figure who played a key role in the very event that haunts her. These intertwined mysteries propel the reader across time and distance. Now, this book is very much a standalone. It involves characters and occurrences from the family upstairs, written earlier by Lisa Jewell, but I actually recommend reading The Family Remains first and then going back and reading The Family Upstairs. The Family Remains by Lisa Jewell. My next pick is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston, fiction. If you're in the mood for a ghostly romance with a touch of mystery, look no further than The Dead Romantics. When Florence Day, a romance ghostwriter who's lost all belief in love, returns home to bury her father, she's confronted by a handsome ghost with unfinished business. 
With her career and heart on the line, Florence must navigate a town that has never understood her and unravel the secrets of the past to find her happily ever after. With its quirky characters, Southern charm, and supernatural twist, The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston is a delightful and heartwarming story about loss, love, and second chances. The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. The Catch Me If You Can, One Woman's Journey to Every Country in the World by Jessica Nabongo, nonfiction. The cover of this book instantly drew me in, and it did not disappoint. Born in the USA to Ugandan parents, Jessica Nabongo did what most people have never done. In addition to driving through 38 states, she visited all 195 UN-recognized countries. She did so mainly between 2017 and 2019 sliding in just before the COVID worldwide lockdown. Though not a biography, her writing style is very personable. Professionally, she started at the pharmaceutical Pfizer, taught English for a year in Japan, and the rest is history. She's worked with the UN, is a photographer, started a luxury travel agency, and an e-commerce website. Her photographs, which are gorgeous, vibrant, and engaging, show the people and countries in all of their glory. The Catch Me If You Can by Jessica Nabongo. Can't get to an art museum? How about a virtual tour? Come check out our popular tours with the Getty Museum this summer. Vive la France takes a deep dive into landscapes, decor, and furniture. The Sceptered Isle will view Britain's art pieces from the 13th through the 19th centuries. The docents are super knowledgeable with facts, trivia, and stories. These sessions aren't recorded, so you don't want to miss them. Okay, my next pick is Counterfeit by Kirsten Chen, fiction. Stanford alum Ava Wong has been a rule-following overachiever her whole life. Attorney turned exhausted mother of an overactive toddler, Ava's world is rocked when her college roommate Winnie resurfaces. Quickly, Ava gets sucked into Winnie's counterfeit designer handbag scam. But when the police crack down, Winnie flees the country and Ava is left holding the bag. Pun intended. Equal parts Thelma and Louise, inventing Anna, and crazy rich Asians, The novel explores the stereotypes of the model minority, class, and privilege. Plus, a huge plot twist halfway through makes it the perfect pick for your summer book club. Counterfeit by Kirsten Chen. All right, for my next pick, I've got Pineapple Street by Jenny Jackson. Fiction. Get a front row seat to some juicy family drama and first world problems. Meet the Stocktons. They're an old money family living in the affluent neighborhood of Brooklyn Heights, New York. Darlie, the eldest sibling, gave up her inheritance and the job of her dreams for her husband and kids. And does she regret that decision? Maybe a little bit. Sasha is a middle-class New Englander who has just married into the family. Her husband, Cord, is the middle Stockton sibling. She's trying her best to adjust to the lofty lifestyle and lofty expectations of her in-laws, but sometimes it seems like her best is just not quite enough. Georgiana is the youngest. She finds herself struggling with love, tennis, and the implications of inherited wealth. Will she find herself or will she spiral? Maybe both. Each of the Stockton women are forced to reevaluate their lives as they face their own challenges in this character-driven read. This book is witty yet heartfelt, light yet indulgent, and like a pineapple, it's sweet but tart. It's the perfect summer read, Pineapple Street by Jenny Jackson. How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendricks. Okay, I promised myself I would calm, keep calm describing this book because this is like my favorite book of the last few years. And also a full disclosure, when I was a teenager in the 80s, I was terrified of the marionette Madam on Solid Gold. 
So I already went into this book, Afraid of Puppets. The story revolves around Louise Joyner, who receives a shocking phone call from her brother that their parents have been in a car accident and so have died. So um, Louise's mother was a Christian puppeteer. Yes, a puppeteer who performed Christian shows with puppets. And the book is just amazing. I don't even know. I'm going to keep calm. I really like this. And thank you, Emily. I will never be able to thank you enough for recommending this book to me. So there's a puppet, many puppets, but there's a particular puppet that used to scare Louise when she was little. His name was Pupkin. That's P-U-P-K-I-N. Now, Pupkin, Pupkin, as novel progresses, is clearly it's not just a puppet. He is an animated puppet that is supernaturally animated. And not only that, but he's prone to temper tantrums and homicidal rage, which, yes, <laughs> doesn't sound any less crazy if I say it again. But actually, that is one of the most charming parts of the book because of the way, the even though he's very scary, he's also oddly fascinating in the same way that Chucky from the Chucky movies and Pennywise from It by Stephen King are scary, but also fascinating. So I just really, oh, and I also want to say that there are some humor in it too. Like when the real estate agent, when Louise and her brother are trying to sell a house, the real, real estate agent says, you really need to accept the fact that your house is haunted before you can put it on the market. So not only is it a great summer read, it's also book club discussable because generational trauma fits in as well. How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. Oh, and by the way, he has other books. When I found out, I went, woohoo. So How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. We talked about our travel guides, but there's also other books in our collection that can help you on your travels this summer or into the future. If you're considering an adventure in the great outdoors, then consider borrowing a book about camping, RVing, or identifying wild plants. For um, most books about plant and mushroom identification, those will be in the 581 area, um, the call number. Uh, 796.54 is the call number for camping with tent camping and RV camping included under that. But then recreational vehicles, RVs, are officially denoted under 629 in the Dewey Decimal System. But the books in this subject area are spread between that, the camping section, and some in the travel section. So if you're looking for books about RVing, like I might have in the past, then they are going to be spread out. If you ever need help finding anything, that's what our instructors and research specialists are here for. So don't be afraid to ask. My third title tonight is Benko by Cherie Demeline, Fiction. Lucky St. James hasn't been very lucky in her life thus far, from growing up without a father, to losing her mother, to cancer when she was eight, and now burning out at mundane temp jobs while taking care of her grandmother. However, her life takes a magical turn when she finds a peculiar spoon in her basement. Yes, a spoon. Turns out witches are real, and not only is she a witch, but this magical spoon connects her to a network of witches across North America. She and her grandmother are brought into this coven of witches that front as a company called Venco, which is coven, just rearranged. They must then embark on a journey across the country to usher in a new era of magic and feminine power in the world. For a girl power adventure full of magical realism, check out Venco by Cherie Demeline. So before I explain about the wild card round calendar note, Angie mentioned that one of her titles is book clubable, that is discussable. And note that the first Tuesday in October, that's October 2nd, we'll be doing our book club review, R-E-V-U-E, -E, because it's a little bit of entertainment as well. We'll have discussable books and tips for clubs. So put that on your calendar. It will be online as well, just like this one. So I'd like to give a tip before I get into wild card. And that is if you're going on a trip, if it's a grand adventure or even a humble one, you'll want to make sure that you are prepared health wise. Through the Howard County Department of Health, HCLS branches provide masks, 
and COVID tests for free, just for the asking while supplies last. Call a branch, check on availability, and then stop on in. The Howard County Health Department also offers free vaccine clinics at all Howard County Library System branches. Check the Health Department website and the HCLS event calendar for details. Wildcard round. Well, why are these wildcards? Whereas the previous titles can all be found on our Summer Reading 2023 list, some of the following titles are not. They're wild cards. For example, my first title, which is Alive, the story of the Andes survivors by Piers Paul Reed. Nonfiction, this is all true. A plane carrying amateur rugby, an amateur rugby team crashes into the rugged terrain of the Andes Mountains. There are immediate fatalities, but there are also many survivors. Within days, however, all search missions are called off. It's assumed that no one could possibly have survived the crash, nor the sub-freezing temperatures. This is the story of what followed, the camaraderie, the courage, the strategies, the fear, the difficult decisions, and believe it or not, it is uplifting. And I am going to tell you right now, if I can help you, whether I still walk this earth or not, please allow me to. And if that reference isn't clear to you, you'll need to read Alive, the story of the Andes survivors by Piers Paul Reed. My wild card pick is An Immense World, How Animal Senses Reveal the Hidden Realms Around Us by Ed Yong. Nonfiction. Get ready to discover a world beyond our own. In this fascinating book, Yang takes us on a journey through the senses of animals, from the extraordinary vision of birds to the echolocation of bats and much more. With engaging storytelling and scientific research, Yang unveils a world that is both unfamiliar and captivating. If you're curious about the wonders of the natural world, and once again, a deeper understanding of how animals experience it, then this is the book for you. So come along for the ride and explore the immense world around us. An Immense World by Ed Yong. For my wild card, All the Lonely People by Mike Gale, fiction. I almost did not borrow this book because I thought the cover looked so boring but it is truly one of the most touching and enjoyable novels I've read in a long time. It has a storyline that I have literally never read before, and it covers a diverse range of life happened situations, but in unexpected ways. Hubert is a retired man who lives with his cat. He looks forward to his weekly communication with his daughter, who has migrated to Australia from the UK. The novel also gives us glimpses into Hubert's past, and as a result, his courtship and marriage, health and friendships are addressed, both lifetime friendships and new friendships. To say any more will literally ruin your aha moments. Yes, moments with an S when so many things happen that you really did not see coming. Truly a satisfying read, and I cannot recommend this book enough. All the, All the Lonely People by Mike Gale. Okay, my wild card is Romantic Comedy by Curtis Sittenfeld, fiction. Inspired by headlines and hookups of notorious love affairs. How is it that talented but arguably average-looking dudes 
end up with super glam celebrity it girls. Pete Davidson, Colin Jost, Curtis Sittenfeld is coming for you. This is a fun gender reversal of the trope, who dates up and who dates down? We meet Sally Mills, almost 40, and the writer for a very popular sketch comedy show, unexpectedly feels sparks and maybe love with guest pop star, Noah Brewster. Part love story, part workplace comedy, part coming of middle age, because better late than never, with sharp humor and clever observations about love and identity in the digital age. This is a must read for anyone who has ever chased their dreams or fallen in love. Romantic Comedy by Curtis Sittenfeld. Okay, for my wild card pick, and I will say emphasis on wild, I've got Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang, fiction. In this sharp debut, we follow a piano prodigy who's forced to step away from a promising musical feature, future after a terrible accident befalls her parents. She's desperate to make some quick money living in New York City, and she's recruited to work at Holistic, which is a high-end beauty and wellness boutique that offers all sorts of serums, supplements, and other really strange outlandish treatments. This new job allows our narrator to enjoy a little bit of privilege, but something is not quite right because the creams and tinctures from, her, from Holistic begin to transform her body in strange ways. Can she get to the bottom of the sinister goings on before it's too late? Equal parts creepy and thought provoking, Ling Ling Huang tackles consumerism, the beauty industry, race and identity in this exciting page turner. And while this book is creepy and at times a bit gruesome, it's very engrossing and eye-opening, so I'd recommend it if you want something a little different. Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang. Portrait of a Thief by Grace DeLee. When Will Chen is in into Harvard Museum of Art in, in the opening of the novel, he witnesses an art theft. And while the theft is going on, he, he discreetly grabs part of what is being stolen for himself. One of the thieves happens to notice and slips Will his business card. And in what is one of the most intriguing beginnings of a book I've ever read, Will recruits five, I'm sorry, Will recruits four of his friends, including Daniel, a longtime family friend, Lily, a mechanical engineer and streetcar racer, Alex, a software engineer, who abandoned MIT to a sun spike in her parents' rent. Um, they, he recruits the people he knows will be part of a heist that they are going to commit because they want to retrieve items that were previously belonging to China and have been in an American museum. Each chapter features a close third-person narrative that revolves around each of the characters. So not only is this a great art heist book, but more importantly, it's a great character development, and it explores Chinese American identity, as well as what leads people to make the decisions they do in their life. At times, I was even um, started to fill up. I can't even explain how I could fill up during an art heist book, but it's much more than art heist book, and I'm not even, I mean, I could care less about Ocean's Eleven, or I'm not a big art, art, art heist movie person, but I would love to see this either made into a Netflix show or a Netflix movie or any streaming platform that could do it justice because it's a really good read, both on a thriller level and an emotional level. Portrait of a Thief by Grace D. Lee. And closing us out with my wild card, This Is What It Sounds Like, What the Music You Love Says About You by Susan Rogers, nonfiction. Have you ever fallen immediately in love with a song, only to find out that someone you know, and ordinarily respect the opinion of, doesn't care for it at all? Why do we each enjoy the music that we do? This question is explored by Susan Rogers, notable record producer turned professor of cognitive neuroscience. She proposes the concept of a listener profile, which is based on our brain's reaction to seven key dimensions of music. She breaks down what each of these dimensions are, giving examples of songs that hit different points along that dimension or spectrum, referencing the history of those songs and divulging tidbits from her own astonishing music career along the way. 
If like me, you enjoy podcasts like Song Exploder and Switched on Pop, you'll definitely want to add this to your TBR. And both of those podcasts are amazing listens, by the way. Check out the print copy, or you can request the e-audiobook on Libby for an even improved listening experience. This is What It Sounds Like by Susan Rogers. Well, now we have uh, time to answer some questions, but before that, I'm going to give a shout out to a member of our audience, and I'm just going to say, Brandy, you're a fine girl, and you'll understand that I'm referencing Ash's last title. So I'd also like to thank uh, Zinka, our colleague from the East Columbia branch, who has been serving as our producer. And Zinka, are there any questions in chat that we need to address? Let me check, let's see. Okay. So would really like to have these programs meet in person again? Is the library considering this? Is one of the questions. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll take that one. So we had 168 people register for this event from far and wide. Uh, the Maxine White Warfield room can accommodate even if we squished together and probably violated COVID comfort, maybe 80. So as much as we love being in person with everyone, with our current space constraints, we, we think we really need to stick to online. Okay. And uh, what's the best way to discover which formats are available? Uh, for the library. So I can take this one. Um, probably the best way is to do a catalog search on our website, hclibrary.org. Once you type in the title to the catalog search, um, you'll see a bar appear kind of on the left side of your screen where you can um, kind of hone in on different formats. So there will be a large print box that you could tick if you prefer ebooks or e audiobooks. That'll be available to click off and then that'll refine your search and it'll show you if it's available. Okay. Thank you. And we have we have one more. Uh, how can we find out about summer reading for both my children for children and teens, basically? Sure. Um, so for finding more about summer reading for children and teens, I would recommend visiting the library's website. So if you go to hclibrary.org forward slash summer, that has everything that um, it has the game boards, it has uh, the rules for each age category. Um, I can also give a brief overview for both of those. So for children, um, basically you're just gonna have to complete either 10 activities or read books. Um, and all of those um, suggestions can be found on the game boards. So you can sign up now. We started on June 1st, um, and then you can continue playing um, the game board throughout the summer and finish in August. If you come back into one of the branches in August, you'll be given a finishing prize um, when you uh, complete your game board. For teams, um, we have a t-shirt, a really cool t-shirt that you get for signing up for summer reading. And you're also um, given a game board where you can complete three different activities or um, different suggestions for um, completing the summer reading. And there's a monthly drawing for completing three of those activities that you can um, turn in a, a raffle ticket for your um, favorite gift card. Um, but like I said, everything can be found on the library's website or you can give us a call and we can explain that more. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mickey. Um, what about the app, uh, Reading Challenge? Is there an app for reading challenges? Uh, we have don't ask yeah there's um there's read squared um it's not necessarily an app i don't i don't believe it's a, a website but you can participate either on paper or online 
Okay, thank you. And about, um, is there a, about these meetings, about these, uh, is there a way to do it hybrid? We've been asked to. I mean, that that's an option as well. Um, I, I have to say our um, technological equipment has, it, it's been a little challenging when we've done that. It, uh, it, it works better when it's smaller groups. Um, it, it's difficult when you have a very, a, a large in-person group. Okay. I think, I think that's all for now. That's all the questions that we have. Okay. Or, or we have one for everyone. Which was your favorite among your picks? <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. Should we, should we go in our usual order? So, oh okay. man, the, oh that's always so hard. I I tell you, I really liked anywhere you run, but I have to say that having I I I read alive when I was in junior high school when that was such a thing, and it still sticks with me. And I still think about the decisions that they made and it informs decisions that I make now. So I have to say some of the, the something that has stuck with me that long, it, it must be for a reason. So I, I would pick a live. Um, <clears throat> I would have to say an immense world was probably my favorite. I, I listened to the audiobook and the author read it. And so it was really cool to listen to him, um, you know, talk about his book he read. I also really liked um, The Dead Romantics, though. I don't normally read romance, and I thought it was super cute, light. If you want something fun for summer, that's definitely it. For me, I think my favorite would have to be my wild card um, choice, um, All the Lonely People. But I also really love the photography and the way in which the the book the catch me if you can one woman's journey to every country in the world i really liked the way how the book was put together um it's very engaging very readable lovely lovely gorgeous pictures so those would be, those would be my two wendy i would have to say um probably romantic comedy it was just so fun and um very clever and smart and even though it was set against um kind of the the backdrop of the covid shutdown um it was still just really light and fun and perfect for summer i think oh sorry <laughs> i think my favorite was um unmask alice just because it was one of those books where i didn't want to put it down anytime i read something i was like going to Google and looking up and trying to learn more about what happened. Um, it was just crazy. And I also loved romantic comedy. I just read that and How to Sell a Haunted House, Angie's Pick. That one was really good too. Oh, I would say How to Sell a Haunted House was my favorite of the five. I, I probably shouldn't admit this, but I've been reading horror novels since I was 10 years old and it's my parents don't know that, so don't tell them. But um, not that they're here <laughs> tonight, I mean, but anywho, um, and I also got that my first horror novel at Miller Branch in 1981. And one of the librarians, is, uh, I, I still know her anyway. Um, but I want to say if you read The Lunar Housewife, which is an excellent book and feels like the 50s listen to Ella Fitzgerald or because I try to listen to music of the time that I'm reading unless it's unless it's hard to concentrate well I would never read heavy metal reading a book because it's just, anyway Frank Sinatra or Ella Fitzgerald makes the perfect backdrop to the Lunar Housewife so those are my two favorites but I loved each of them and I wish I could do them even more justice thanks and I'd probably have to say Lavender House um because I don't read mystery thrillers a lot, but when I do read a good murder mystery, I'm like, oh, like, why don't I read or watch these more? And I'm also a huge nerd about queer history. So both of those things in one. And I'll use that as a, a last minute class plug that I am doing an LGBTQIA plus 101 on the 29th of this month. 
if you're not very familiar with the community and want to learn more. And then I'm doing an intro to queer history in October for Queer History Month. So keep an eye out for those on our public calendar. That's uh, eight o'clock now. So if we don't have any other pressing questions, I think Beth is going to close this out for the evening. Well, one thing um, I would invite everyone to attend the summer celebrations that we're having at each and every one of our public service branches. The one at Central will be in, on the evening of June 28th. It's a Wednesday for the whole family. We'll have activities for everyone. And we're so glad you joined us this evening. Thank you for exploring with us. Remember, reading can take us anywhere and adventures await. Thank you and good night.